Hi there, in this video I'm going to talk about three kinds of specialty pizzicato techniques and how they're notated or not notated in some cases. Uh, the first one is left-hand pizzicato and the standard notation for this is a plus above the note. We do a left-hand pizzicato kind of with whatever finger works. Usually there's something else going on that makes you need to have a left-hand pizzicato. It's rare to just randomly have them going on. There's usually a reason why you're doing it. For instance, if you are playing a melody, I don't, that's not anything in particular, I'm just kind of making that up. So there's an example where I'm doing some plucking on open strings to give myself some bass notes as if I'm playing a duet with myself, which is very often what happens with this left hand pizzicato. So I want to look at a, a few examples of how that's used in music. And, and actually all these techniques are mostly found in 20th and 21st century music because they are more contemporary things. But you will find them in solo music, in orchestra music, in various ensemble music. So it's important to know how to recognize them and how to make choices about how to play them. So the first thing I'm gonna look at here is a, a small excerpt from a piece called Hallucinations by the Spanish composer Rogelio Huguet y Tagel, who lived in the early 20th century. Uh, and this is a, a piece that's interesting because it starts off with the left hand pizzicato and you're thinking, why is that there? You could easily have played this pizzicato with the regular right hand pizzicato, but the composer's trying to establish this idea of this pattern. He says it's an effect of a bell. So he's trying to establish this sound. It does make a different sound when you do left hand pizzicato because usually when you're doing a pizzicato with your right hand, you're plucking down in a place that resonates better. And when you're using left hand pizzicato, it's often up here. And it's, you don't get as sometimes as good a ring. It can be tinnier up in this register of the cello. So often we wanna to try to match what we're gonna do. So when I'm looking at a left hand pizzicato, I, you have to choose a finger, so I choose a finger that's going to be convenient for what I'm playing. So in this case, I'm, I actually don't start with the finger I'm going to eventually use. I am going to use my thumb to do the left hand plucking. Here is the beginning of this piece. piece alone by Giovanni Solima and you'll be able to see my left hand plucking better because I'm gonna, now I'm going to do it with my fourth finger. This is an example uh, from the bottom of the first page of this piece. <laughs> to do with your hand to hold your first finger on the fifth and without disturbing it get your pinky up on the on the pizzicato so sometimes these techniques are really tough to manage I'm gonna play one more example of something that uses left hand pizzicato and in this case the left hand pizzicato is much more integrated into the rhythm as opposed to being something that accompanies a melody. This is by that Spanish composer Rogelio Juguet y Targuel. This is from his second Spanish suite. This is the flamenco movement. <laughs> to coordinate. 
So the next technique I want to talk about is known as Bartok pizzicato or snap pizzicato. And this is a pizzicato that was invented by the Hungarian composer Béla Bartok uh, in the mid, early mid 20th century. And it is notated in a confusing way because sometimes we think it's a thumb marking. Uh, it's an upside down thumb marking really. So I'll, I will show you the example here. The first one where the circles on top and the stem is going down, that means thumb play with your thumb, like just as a finger. Uh, and then the second one where the stick of the sign is going up, that is the snap pits or the Bartok pizzicato. And we use those two names uh, equally. They're, they both mean the same thing. This is a pizzicato you've probably actually done accidentally. And it is the kind of thing that sounds like this. So it's a slap where you pull the string straight up in the air. And those would be all notated with the upside down lollipop circle with a stick going up. Um, I'm gonna play a brief little piece from something called Variations on the Volga Boatman uh, by the Danish composer Niels Vigo Benson. Uh, and this is a section that is a pizzicato variation, all very soft, and then you can see, if you look at this music, at the very end of this uh, little excerpt, there are those Bartok pizzas. And they are marked fortissimo because this is not a soft technique. You cannot play these soft. one more technique to show you and this is one that is not notated and what I mean by that is you have to figure out sometimes how to play pizzicatos to make them work in the piece so this is not a specialty sound particularly but rather it is a way to play the pizzicatos and that is to hold your bow like you're bowing and stick your finger off the end of the bow and grab the pizzicato. And this is something that you have to do when you're playing very quickly. But the, the chunk that I wanna play for you here is another section. It's the, the next page after the place I just played, uh, which so I'm still in this pizzicato variation. And it goes back and forth, arco pits, arco pits, arco pits. So here's the section starting in the second measure. You can, you can hardly tell that I'm doing the pizzicato because it's, it's happening so quickly, but I'm definitely sticking sticking my finger off the off the bow. Okay, so there's your pizzicato lesson for today. I hope that you found those interesting. Have fun.